Yo, what is up guys? My name is Patrick, host of EDH Brutality, and welcome to my very first EDH Tech Tech. Let's get into it. Alrighty folks, welcome back. Now, before we jump into this deck tech, I must say each individual part of this video is timestamped. So if you want to jump around, feel free to do so. Just want to put it out there. So let's get right into it. Our commander is a Togatog. He is from Odyssey. He's one of the very first Wuberg commanders. And he reads, a Togatog sacrifice in a Tog. A Togatog gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is a sacrifice of Tog's power. He is a 5-5 and his flavor text reads, it relishes old-fashioned family meals. Essentially, this dude is a cannibal, and you're gonna eat your togs, and then your tog tog is gonna eat himself, and then you're gonna profit. Think of it like a suicide deck. As a matter of fact, the name of this deck I came up with is called Suicidal Atogs, and it's for good reason. So, whether you like or dislike this deck, it's entirely up to you. But essentially, if you love infinite loops, repeating a loop over and over again, draining the table, or just winning the game that way, this is not a deck like that. If you enjoy going under the radar, this is a deck like that. You join fast mana, I'm sorry. The fastest mana this deck has to offer is a soul ring. If you have a budget, I'm also sorry, unless you're proxying, of course. You know, it is a five color deck, so we need as many lands as we possibly can to color fix ourselves. And most importantly, if you love dick. Okay, I'm just, I'm joking about that part. Anyways, back on topic, we're essentially going to be playing cards so obscure looking. In creatures that do such strange things that your opponent's gonna think you straight up took them from the fourth grade art wall. What the fuck was that? Ah! Oh wait, is that even a magic card? <laughs> what, you don't think flight is a magic card? With this fucking zebra? Get the fuck out of here. So obviously our Mr. Atogatog, you know, he, he needs more Atogs to eat, to function. So that's right, we're going full tribal with this deck. We're including all the Atogs, and all these Atogs essentially do various things, but they all have one thing in common, and that is screwing its controller over. For example, like, oh, you want to sacrifice an enchantment? Sure, you can sacrifice an enchantment for a plus two, plus two, but wait, it's only until end of turn. Oh, you want to get plus three, plus three on your Chronotog? Well, sure, but you got to skip your next turn. And my personal favorite, you want a plus one, plus one? Go ahead and sacrifice the land. Essentially, nobody's gonna bat an eye at this deck. They're gonna think you're the laughing stock at the table. And honestly, I can't blame them. However, <laughs> it's gonna get real funny as soon as you start mass sacking your own lands. It's gonna get real funny. <laughs> so you're probably wondering by now, well, there's only 12 Atogs in all of Magic the Gathering. How the hell are we gonna get them out on the table and have a presentable board state? Well, there are a few ways in this deck, in the way of enchantments, one being the Prismatic Bridge. It states, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card, put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Pair this with cards such as Wild Pair or Call of the Kindred, and you've got a nice efficient way to pump out those rare dogs. You have to make sure though, when you're playing these cards, you let the play group know that these cards are strictly to pump out your togs and explain to them how bad the togs are. Trust me, the last thing you want to do is play the Prismatic Bridge only for someone to remove it in fear of you sending out some big bad creatures. No, we're not trying to send out some big bad creatures. We're just trying to send out our dog shit of togs. So congratulations. By now we have various togs on the table by the help of the previous two cards. However, we must protect the main guy himself, Mr. Tog Tog, as he is our key to victory in this deck. And better yet, we've got several cards in our arsenal to help do so. We've got Lightning Greaves, two colorless, zero equip states, equip creature has shroud and haste. Pretty self-explanatory. We have Conqueror's Flail, it's two mana, two mana equipped. Says equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. For each color among permanents you control. In this case, we're playing Wooberg with our commander on board. It'll be five. So if we equip to our commander, he'll get an additional five, five, making him a total of a 10, 10, which is absolutely massive for our game plan. Not only that, the cheeky ability in the second line states, as long as Conqueror's Flail is attached to a creature, your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. Ooh. This is absolutely phenomenal, especially when we're starting to go off in this deck. Nobody can even respond if it's our turn. They have to wait until their own, and by then, it's usually too late. Lastly, our final piece of protection here is a lifeline. It's a really cool five mana artifact card. It states, 
Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard and a creature is in play, return that creature from the graveyard to play at end of turn. Now this was errated recently, and this is a global artifact now, so it's not necessarily one-sided, which used to make it busted. However, we'll still take it. So essentially, this is gonna really help protect our target Tog. If someone removes it, when our target Tog hits the grave, as long as anybody has a creature, he will come back at end of turn, which is phenomenal. Not only this, but this allows our target Tog to eat our other Tog. So if we wanna fire some shots, make them super big and swing out on a single turn, as long as there's one other creature alive on board, all of the Togs that we've eight with our target dog will come back i know it's a headache but it's a fun one while we're on the topic of recursion we have to have ways to bring back our togs if for some reason lifeline does not get on the table or let alone forget just the togs we need a way to get back what we've sacrificed so we've got various cards in this deck we've got cosmic intervention for three colors and one white it's instant states have a permanent you control would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, exile it instead. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This will allow us to sack all of our lands, you name it. Anything that's on the battlefield, it will come right back. For a very similar effect, we've got base reward. It says return to the battlefield all permanent cards in your graveyard that will put there from the battlefield this turn. We have second sunrise for two white and one colors. It says each player returns to play all artifact, creature, enchantment, and land cards that were put in their graveyard from play this turn. Like I said, we've got various forms of recursion in this deck. We've got permanents that we need to stack. That's fine, as long as we can bring them back. And the cream de la cream of this deck, we have Eerie Ultimatum. Now, the reason why I absolutely adore this card is in my meta, there's a Bruvok player. So I'm constantly getting milled. Well, it just takes one card called Eerie Ultimatum and all of those cards that were milled, everything, every permanent in our graveyard will be spit right onto the battlefield. And let's just say for some reason, this is in the graveyard and that's our only hope. Well, call a spade a spade. We always have Yagmoth's Will as a backup plan. Am I right? No, that's just, that's a casual card, right? <laughs> So essentially what we're trying to do, the whole premise of the deck, right, is we spit out permanents, we spit out the Atogs, we have the Atogs eat our permanents, whether it's our hand, our lands, our graveyard, whatever, and then we have our Tog Atog eat our Atogs. Now once we do all of this and load the gun, we have three options and they can all win us the game. One is a three mana enchantment called Males Araya for one red, one green, and one white. It states, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control if you control a creature with power 5 or greater. Then, you gain 10 life if you control a creature with power 10 or greater. Then, you win the game if you control a creature with power 20 or greater. So essentially, as soon as this goes on the stack, right, at the beginning of your upkeep, you start mass sacking your togs, your permanents, and buff out that Atogatog, -atog. so by the time this trigger resolves, your Atogatog -atog is above 20 power. The second win is for style, okay? That is simple, it's a barren glory, all you need is a few things, right? You need several Atogs, you need to eat all your permanents, get rid of your hand, have Atogatog -atog eat the Atogs, and then you have Atogatog -atog eat himself. <laughs> Okay. The third and final win con of this deck is what I call the Alpha Strike. Essentially what we're doing with this is taking out every player at the table in one fell swoop. Now there are two cards in this deck that make this very efficient, right? But we're not here to do that. If you want to know what those cards are though, one is Rupture. This is almost like a, oh fuck you, I'm going to kill myself, I'm going to take everyone out of the game too. So yeah, you're going to die. But, you know, you're gonna die in style. The second way is Chandra's Ignition. You know, same thing, make a talk talk super big. This is a one-sided rupture. It just kills everyone else but you. However, the true Alpha Strike is when you take out three players in the best way possible. And that's by making your talk talk super big. You all know how to do it by now, you know. You sack things to your togs, you have your talk talk eat your togs. So, you're ready to take out people with the Alpha Strike. Here's what you do. 
you go to combat, you need to give him trample somehow. So let's just say we've got one of our various cards. Let's use Fatal Frenzy as an example. Fatal Frenzy for two mana and one red, it reads, until end of turn, target creature controls gains trample and gets plus X plus zero, where X is power. Sacrifice it at end of turn. We don't care about the sacrifice. All we care about is our big ass atog. If he's equipped with that Conqueror's Flail I mentioned earlier, they can't even respond to this. They're just dead. He is trampled. Let's just say he was a 30-30. You double him. He's now a 60-30 because of the Fatal Frenzy. Well, sure, we did eliminate one player, but we have to eliminate the next two. So your next move is you cast something like an Essence Harvest or a Soul's Fire or a fling. Target any one of these bad boys at the second opponent, they're dead. And then you're probably like, well, the gun has gone off. How do I get rid of the third play? Well, don't play any of these cards if your Tog Tog is not equipped with the Dying Wish. I mean, if, if you have the Dying Wish, you have the game. You just dome someone with combat damage, right? Specifically commander damage. They can't come back from that. You burn the other player. And then when you sacrifice the Tog Tog, or let's say he eats himself, you just dying wish the third player. You just win the game. It is the funniest win con I've ever done. And with the amount of recursion in this deck and how mockable the creatures look and their abilities are, since nobody touches you, the amount of times you're able to pull this off are far more than you could ever imagine. Now, as we wrap up this video, there are several cards that you should all know about that are essentially all stars in this deck and have some really cool interactions. The first being Mirror Entity. So Mirror Entity is a two colors, one white shapeshifter. It states X, you know, you just pay X mana until end of turn, all your creatures, base power and toughness, they get that, right? So what you're gonna do with this is it allows you to pump up all those atogs. Oh, your atogs are only one twos before they start sacking. That's okay, I'm gonna spend five mana. They're all now five fives. You sack five atogs that are five fives to your atog atog. That's 25 power on top of a Tog Tog's power. That's 30 power right there. That's enough to kill someone. You have cards like Mega Tog, right? Mega Tog, four colorless and two red. He's the biggest Tog in the deck. He gets three, three for every artifact sacked. Now, this card kind of sucks until you pair in Myco Synth Gladys for six mana, all your permanents are artifacts. Sack any permanent you want. That Mega Tog is getting fucking huge. Oh, you got an Aura Tog, you need a sack enchantments. Yeah, same thing. The chance is even. Everything's now an enchantment. Water Spawn for four colors and two white. Whenever you sack an Atog to make your big Atog large, going in for a swing, every opponent needs to sack a permanent of the same type. So you sack an Atog, making your big Atog bigger, they have to sack a creature. That opens up the field. You sack a land, they have to do the same. You're playing a five color deck, you need color fixing? No problem. Prismatic Omen. It's two mana. All your lands are every basic land type now. And while we're on the topic of lands, you know, obviously all of our lands, <laughs> they're fucking tap lands. <clears throat> so I can't name a better deck. A card like Angel of Vigor will go in. For one colorless, all your lands that would enter tapped now untap themselves. It is such a cool deck for what it does because it takes something that shouldn't work and it just does, especially since the fuel for a TOG can come right back to your board. If you're interested in more about this deck, link to the full Moxfield deck list will be down in the description below. I've got all my decks on Moxfield. I'll be showcasing all of them shortly here on this channel. If you want to buy this deck, I highly recommend Proxing as the mana base is not cheap. And as always, I thank you all so much for watching. Guys, the amount of support on my last video was I can't thank you enough. It, it means the absolute world to me. And, you know, this is my very first deck tech or deck showcase, whatever you want to call it. I'm still new to Magic YouTube. So if you guys have any tips, tricks, or what you want to see on this channel, how can I prove? I'm all ears. And as always, if you want to stay tuned for more future videos from this channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So, as I said, my name is Patrick, host of EDH Brutality. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, guys.